together let's build an RC car. First let's see the chassis. This is the chassis and here we have made it out of plastic but we can make it out of any material for example here we have made it out of citrofoam. We will also need two motors and one caster wheel like this. The motors will be running at like this. The motors will be running and the car will be moving. Next we have a power supply here which will provide power to the whole circuit. Then we have this Arduino Mega which is the brains of our model but we can use any Arduino for example Uno, Micro, anyone. Here we have an IR receiver which will receive the signals from our remote. IR signals from our remote. Next we have this motor shield and we we can just plug in motors into this shield and they can easily be controlled by our Arduino. This I have used this kind of shield but you can use any any kind of motor shield for example L298D etc etc. Now let's look at the remote we will be using. We will be using this remote which is a normal TV remote and we will be coding these five buttons. The power button, the up button, the down button, the right button and the left button. When we, we have to code the, these buttons of the remote so that you can use them to control our motor. Now let's look at the code. Now let's look at the code. Before we get deep into the code, we will have to get the hex codes for our remote buttons because if each remote has different hex codes for different buttons. In our code, we have a line, we have this line which will help us easily see the hex codes on our serial monitor. Now let's look at the serial monitor. So now let's see. I am pressing the power button and it's giving this code. Up button, this code, down, right and left. We will have to note down these codes for future reference because we will need them in our Arduino code. Now, now, now let's look at the code in a bit more detail. First, first thing we do is include the irremote.h library which will help us receive and send the IR data. And we have also made a variable here int receive pin which we have set to 9 because in, in our robot, in our RC car, our receiver is connected to pin 9 of the Arduino board. So this receive pin is now pin 9. We will have to make it pin 9. It, now another integer, we have made another integer system state and we have set it to 0 and it will track whether our RC car is on or off. So if it's 0 that means it's off, if it's 1 that means it's on. And now we'll use the class irreceive to create an object irreceive on the pin receive pin which we had set to 9 earlier in the code. Now we will make another object results from we will make another object results from another class decode results which will which will define it as the decoded results from IR libraries irreceive.decode command. Now let's look at void setup. The first thing we do in word setup is start the serial communication at 9600 baud. Next, we set pin 5 
pin 3, pin 6 and pin 11 all to output. So because those are the pins of the motor, the motors. So then we can control the motors nicely. Now we have now we have this line of code irsif.enable irin which will enable the ir input from the irsif object. Here we have if irsif.decode and results which means if any infrared signal is received at the ir receiver then we convert the infrared signal into hex data and print it on the serial monitor results dot value as hex which is hex which is short for hexadecimal next we make a switch case statement with switch results value and different cases depending upon the codes of the buttons this case code is for the power button click so let's see case 0x this number we will we will have to replace this number with the power buttons code because this is what the code that this is what this case code does first it checks whether the system state is zero which means if it's off and if it is off then it turns it on by setting system state to one but if system state is one already then it sets it to zero which turns it off so if it off if it's off it turns it on and if it's on it turns it off and then it turns off pin 5, 3, 6 and 11 through the digital write statement because those are the pins of the motors. So every time we click the power button, the motors will stop. Next, we put break to end the case code. Next, we have case 0x, this different number and we will have to replace this number with the code for the up button because this code first checks whether system state is one that means whether it's on and then if it is it turns on pin 5 off pin 3 on pin 6 and off pin 11 and then it puts a break so that this case statement can be over next we have another case code case 0x uh, yet another different hex code and this will have to repl be replaced with the hex code for the down button because here we are having if system state equal to 1 which means if the robot is on turn off pin 5 on, turn on pin 3 turn off pin 6 and turn on pin 11 which will make both the motors move backward and so the robot will also move backward next we put break to stop the case statement then we have this other case statement which is similar to the rest but after it checks whether the system state is one it turns on pin 5 off pin 3 off pin 6 and on pin 11 so that the right motor moves forward but the left motor moves backward hence it turns towards the right so this is the right button score and then break this code for the left button on the other hand will first check whether the system state is one which means whether it's on and if it is it will turn off pin 5 on pin 3 on pin 6 and off pin 11 so the right motor will be moving backwards but the left motor will be moving forwards so it will turn towards the left next we have break to end this case statement break next we put a closing curly brace to close the switch case statement which means that switch case statement is over next we put a delay of 500 milliseconds which is half a second so that everything runs stably and then we call the command irreceive.resume which which will make the ir receiver ready to receive its next bit of data now let's run through a quick demo of how the robot actually works so let's power up our rc car we'll use the power button for that now let's
let's make it move. Let's make it move forward first. Now let's make it move backwards. Now we can even turn it towards the right and turn it towards the left. And afterwards we can power it off. Hope you liked it and we will be doing more such awesome projects in the future. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe.